subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The sound of lasers on Mars and measuring gravitational force from a tiny ball of gold. These are some of the stories we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. This week, NASA has released the sound of lasers recorded by the Perseverance rover on Mars. The audio clips recorded by the microphone attached to the SuperCam mounted on the rover that landed on the red planet on February 18. Let us take a few seconds to listen to this recording. As you can see, in contrast to the pew-pew sound effects we are accustomed to hearing in sci-fi movies, real-life lasers in space produce more of a continuous clicking sound. This is the first acoustic recording of laser impact on rock target on Mars from March 2. In the recording, we can hear sounds of 30 impacts, some slightly louder than others. The sounds are of the lasers hitting Martian rocks. Variation in the intensity of the zapping sounds will provide information on the physical structure of the targets, such as its relative hardness or the presence of weathering coatings. Last week, NASA had also released the sound recordings of wind blowing on the Martian surface. Also this week, scientists have discovered the most distant and ancient source of radio emissions in the universe. The source is a quasar with powerful jets emitting at radio wavelengths. It is so far away that its light has taken 13 billion years to reach us. Quasars are very bright objects that lie at the center of some galaxies. They are powered by supermassive black holes as the black hole consumes the surrounding gas, energy is released, allowing astronomers to spot them even when they are very far away. The newly discovered quasar, nicknamed P172 plus 18, is so distant that the light from it has travelled for about 13 billion years to reach us. We see it as it was when the universe was just about 780 million years old. While more distant quasars have been discovered, this is the first time that astronomers have been able to identify the telltale signatures of radio jets in a quasar this early on in history of the universe. Only about 10% of quasars, which astronomers classify as radio loud, have jets which shine brightly at radio frequencies. P172 plus 18 is powered by a black hole about 300 million times more massive than our sun that is consuming gas at a stunning rate. In other news from space, researchers have discovered that the moon has a tail made of millions of sodium atoms that got blasted out of the lunar soil and into space by meteor strikes. These particles are then pushed further by solar radiation, which elongates this sodium tail. Every month, there are days when the moon sits between the Earth and the Sun. During this time, the Earth's gravity drags the sodium tail into a long beam that wraps around the atmosphere of the Earth before blasting into space on the opposite side. The lunar tail is harmless and invisible to the naked eye. However, during new moon days each month, the beam becomes visible to high-powered telescopes that can detect the faint orange glow of sodium in the sky. Also this week, a new study predicts that without efforts to mitigate climate change, summers spanning nearly six months may become the new normal by 2000 in the Northern Hemisphere. In the 1950s in the Northern Hemisphere, the four seasons, summer, autumn, winter and spring, arrived in a predictable and fairly even pattern. However, climate change is now driving dramatic and irregular changes to the length and start dates of the seasons, which may become more extreme in the future under a business-as-usual climate scenario. The researchers used historical daily climate data from 1952 to 2011 to measure the changes in the four seasons length and onset in the Northern Hemisphere. 
They define the start of the summer as the onset of temperatures in the hottest 25% during that time period, while winter began with temperatures in the coldest 25%. The study found that on average, summer grew from 78 to 95 days between 1952 to 2011, while winter shrank from 76 to 73 days. Spring and autumn also contracted from 124 to 115 days and 87 to 82 days respectively. Accordingly, spring and summer begin earlier while winter and autumn start later. Such changes can wreak havoc in agriculture especially when springs or late snowstorms damage budding plants. With longer growing seasons, humans will breathe more allergy causing pollen and disease carrying mosquitoes can expand their range northward. Meanwhile, researchers have successfully measured the smallest gravitational force, opening up new possibilities for testing the laws of gravity on previously unattained small scales. The team from Vienna succeeded in measuring the gravitational field of a gold sphere just 2 mm in diameter using a highly sensitive pendulum. Gravity is the weakest of all known forces in nature. Larger objects are associated with stronger gravity which is why during the time of Isaac Newton it was believed that gravity was reserved for astronomical objects such as planets. It was not until the work of English scientist Henry Cavendish that all objects generate their own gravitational force. Using an elegant pendulum device, Cavendish succeeded in measuring the gravitational force generated by a lead ball 30 cm tall weighing 160 kg in the year 1797. In the latest work, researchers from University of Vienna built a miniature version of the Cavendish experiment. They use lasers to make precise measurements of the movements. This made it possible to determine the gravitational field of an object that has roughly the mass of a ladybug for the first time. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.